You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Yeah. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Hour, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Ruben with Bridges of Blaze, and you are watching Bods Mayhem Hour. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bods Mayhem Hour. I am your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And as always, I am bringing you guys and y'all's awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a huge privilege to welcome Ruben Zamora of Bridges of Blaze. Bridges of Blaze has released their new single and video entitled Numb. Also, they draw from specific influences ranging from death metal to jazz and beyond to craft their own sound that is equal parts unique and authentic. I hope I said the, the, the last word right because I I just checked out on that one. So perfect. It's all good. So Ruben, welcome to the podcast. How you doing, my man? Dude, um, I'm humbled and blessed to be here, man. Thank you so much for such an amazing introductory. Um, I'm doing fantastic. You know, just got off of work from my nine to five. Came shit over here. Had some lasagna. I'm drinking a good old 1877 sparkling water. It's it's great. Hanging here with you. All right, you got my heart on lasagna, man. All right, that is such you know right now. That's that's the key to my my soul is lasagna. <laughs> I'll definitely note that whenever. Uh, hey, who knows? Maybe we'll start playing shows. We'll cater and boom, lasagna. That's right. I don't care where it's at. You mentioned lasagna. I want my lasagna. Garlic bread or no garlic bread? Oh, it's got to be. It doesn't matter. I can eat it without or with. It does not matter. Same here. Does but not yeah, man, matter. Grateful to be here, so thank you for having me. So we're going to start this and kick this off. For the ones who don't know about Bridges of Blaze, is that you and Brian met in a guitar center. Is that right? Or take me down memory lane. How'd that happen? Whew. So it was a summer of 2014, and yes, you're correct. It was Guitar Center. It was uh, the north location in Austin, Texas, one of the second uh, two locations there. I remember me and my buddy, we just said, hey, dude, let's pass some time. I had just gotten through a ton of interviews for the week. Let's go. Let's go play some guitars, you know, just going in there with, you know, with no intentions. Mm -hmm. I kid you not. As soon as I walked in through those doors at Guitar Center, you hear the most heavenly sounds. And guess who it was? It was Brian. He is shredding, going off. I remember he was using a Spider 4 amplifier. He was just looping his rhythm. And I was thinking, what is this guy doing? And he shreds. I was, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, I was a deer in the headlights. So in that moment, I started thinking, man, I, I, man, I got I to at least shred with him or something. So we get on to the other side of the walls of the amps. This is when Guitar Center had those, uh, those wall amps. Mm. One side. So I get on to the other. Me and buddy, we just start jamming out. And before we know it, Brian stops, and then I start shredding. And then I stop, he starts shredding. And before we know it, it's like this insane guitar duel that we're both just going off. And right right when it's peaking, he turns off the amp. I just hear it turn off. I'm like, dude, I felt it in my heart. <laughs> I was a little, a little sad. I'm like, man, no, this was so much fun. Anyways, I just hear a voice as a guy just peek out in the corner. Hey, who is that just shredding? Oh, hey, what's up, man? It's me. He just runs over to me like, dude, you're amazing. You know, it's just, I was thinking, no, it should be the other way around. You're amazing. You know? So, you know, we just exchanged numbers. And at the time he was asking, hey, are you guys like a duo package? I'm like, at the time, I was like, yeah, dude, sorry. But hey, let's stay in contact. And throughout the years, we just stayed in contact. You know, we would hang out jam you know have a good time at his apartment's place or his friends and it all just kind of rolled off from there it was shred at first sight folks that's all you need to know exactly <laughs> how excited are you guys to release this new single titled numb did the song turn out exactly the way you guys wanted it to honestly i was shocked um i don't know if um, brian already talked about this but i will say when the song was finished. I, I was 
left feeling, I guess, numb. <laughs> Reason I say that is because I guess hearing it so many times, you, I guess, kind of get bored of it. You're like, ah, I don't know if the audience is really going to vibe with this. They're not really going to love it. But we just put it out into the universe. They say, hey, we promise them we're going to deliver. Let's deliver. Well, after really seeing the video behind the music, it really just kind of made me fall with this song in love all over again. I still remember just finishing the song. I was so excited. But again, the whole process kind of wears you out. And seeing people's feedback, it, it really reignites that fire within you. You know, they're saying this, they love it. It's our best one yet. And it's really, you know, eye-opening. Like, wow, okay. So they they really do love this stuff. And it's kind of crazy. Back then, you're like, uh, I'm not too much of a fan. But then you put it out. They're like, it's insane. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. Okay. I was wrong. <laughs> I'll tell you this right now. The song's not that long, which is what I love, but it hits you. And that breakdown, man, that that heaviness is like, if you if you don't, if it doesn't grab your attention, then any music lover that's out there, you're sadly missing something great. I mean, this song is really good because just that breakdown, man, is just over the, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's just, it's <laughs> just so, I was like, oh, dude. Thank this you, is, man. This is it. Yeah, it was yeah. it was it was a fun one to 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 write with Brian and I remember just messing around with MIDI because I'm not a drummer. We or I just Robbie, he tends to say uh, when once we give him the stabs, he just turns around, dude. You guys are trying to kill your drummer. This is impossible. <laughs> so he kind of chops it up, makes it a little more realistic. We're just we're just guitar players. We hear chugs. We add it with the feet. But, you know, that's cool. So speaking of numb, it's a heavier song from you guys. But did you add anything differently on this song to what fans are accustomed to hearing from you? Honestly, yeah. I know um, when we started developing the song, it, we had a different vision in mind. I remember we had spoken a little bit of maybe adding a little rap, you know, mm. digging back to our roots, Lincoln Park, rest in peace, Chester, Chester Bennington, uh, like in our our hit single Hellbent. That one has a really cool rap part inspired by Linkin Park. And uh, I remember the vibes just changed. You know, I put on the headphones and for some reason my mind shifted to Evanescence. Amy Lee, just the way she sings, very dark, very emotional. And it, it, it just turned into something different. So we had no plans on what it was going to happen, but it just, we just kept rolling with it. When you see that growth as a song comes together like that, you know, you have it in one place and then it ends up being this, that transition. When you see that birth and it come out, how good does that feel though to say, okay, we want to go this way, but man, this is a lot better. Oh man, this is where you really got to trust your gut. Um, I'm not kidding. There's, there's been moments where Robbie and Brian just take the lead in some of the sections. Cause you know, it's, I have writer's block or I overthink it too much or, I'm just sitting there like, man, like it, ne it needs to be better. It's cool, but it needs to be better. And there's moments where they take take off with it. And I just I just sit there and I just want to cry. There's been a moment where I shed it a couple tears after hearing it back. I'm like, whoa, hold on. I need to gather myself real quick. So that that to me is when you know you just you just feel it. Yep. That's when you know when it hits you and you're like, this is our music. This is something that I grew up listening to. And now I'm putting something out here in the universe that's ours. This is our take on it. Exactly. Exactly. So are, are we going to get more heavier songs like Numb going forward? Or are you still experimenting with your sound? Oh, most definitely heavier. There is a really good song that we just finished uh, shooting a music video for. Zombie themed. Post-apocalyptic world. And it's heavy, heavy breakdown. Brian added some insane screams to the point oh. where he, his voice, his vocals almost gave up, gave out. I remember he just, he would stare at me, give me that look like, dude, I should stop. But then the, the producer's like, come on, man, give me a little more. So Brian, you know, he, he pushed it and it's, it's mind blowing. That's all I'm going to say. It's mind blowing. It's heavy. It drops some insane riffs like Era, um, and Shuga. You know, all those guys out there. So it, it does get heavy. So please stick around. If you guys really do love Numb with the way the foot kick works, the syncopation with the guitars, it's going to get better, I promise. So you mentioned this just a little bit ago about the fans' feedback fueling your fire. But how, you know, when you were seeing that and you're reading that, man, how much of an inspiration is that for you to say, look, you know, we got something here? 
Oh, it honestly, it gives me, it gives me hope, it gives me hope in, in this, in this business. I know it's a little cliche to say, you know, oh, you see, you see a couple of comments and to, to me, it, it's, it's everything. Me and Brian have been at this for 10 plus years and we've had a lot of projects fail, but this is the most successful one. We're going to take it to the, to the top. And when people really resonate with our feelings, when they say, oh, you saved us. Oh, you know, I was thinking X, Y, and Z, and now I'm feeling A, B, and C. It, it's one of the most liberating moments because, you know, we, we poured our pain and our feelings, whatever we're feeling at that time, into the song. And when it really starts helping the community, you know, you kind of put yourself in their shoes again, like, wow, they're healed because of us. Just how we were healed because of the, you know, the people we look up to. You know, it's 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 insane. It's like a torch that was passed on to us, and we're we're, we're going to continue to keep going. Man, you hit the nail on the head right there. And I oh. love how people when they when they hear songs of what you written, you know what it was written about, but they interpret it in their own way and they run with it. I mean, that's the beauty of it, dude. It's it. Yeah, I mean, there's moments where we're just sitting like, why us? Why why are we going through so much? But we write about it. And we look behind us and we see so many people cheering. There was this uh, there was this lady that reached out to us via Facebook. And, you know, sorry, not lady. There was this uh, her husband reached out to us and she was on the she was on the edge. And he said, hey, you guys mind doing this video? I was like, no, I don't mind. You know, if it's going to help her. Yeah, like I'm, I'm all for it. So he kind of told me her name and I kind of did it on the fly on my iPhone. Just iMovie. It's like boom, boom, boom. But I wanted to get the message across that hey, she's not alone. And when she saw that, she she teared up. Mm. You no, know, we we love our fans. It's like I said before, man, and and everybody who's been on my podcast knows this. Everybody who's listened to my podcast knows this. But music is so much of a drug and therapy. It is yes. so much your voice. I mean, it's it's everything you need to say and get off and. You know, get off your chest and just go away for a while, man. And then once you come back out, it's just like, oh, I needed that. Exactly, man. There's a, I don't know if this is a saying, but it, it recently started hitting me a lot. Music is definitely a universal language. It is something that yes, the sir. mind can see, the mute can speak, and the deaf can hear. Mm -hmm. That is my belief. All right, Ruben, is it a collaborative effort or does one person usually take the lead for writing with you all? You know, we tend to do 50 50 most of it to be honest there's been moments where brian takes a heavy load and i kind of sprinkle some little jazz on top kind of like our one of them heartless man brian just took off with the guitar parts vocals man we kind of just collaborated same with robbie he injures his stuff but the majority of our goal is to kind of say hey we're gonna write a song you start writing i'll start writing something we'll come back re we'll reconvene in a week or two and then we kind of just show ourselves kind of like our progress reports. Hey, this is what I wrote. What do you think? Oh, dude, it's awesome. This is what I wrote. What do you think? We kind of just bounce around those ideas. Before we know it, we're collaborating. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's one of the best things. Creating these original songs and you did the cover of 30 Seconds to Mars, The Kill. Has it met your expectations at this time or has it blown you out of the water so far? Oh, it's blown me out of the water. 1,000%. And I mean it with 100% honesty. We, when we did that song, we pretty much told ourselves, hey, let's see what we can do. It was more of a proof of concept <laughs> to see how it, was, how it would be perceived. I still remember leaving that studio, going from San Antonio back to Austin where, when I used to live up there with him. Um, we were just blasting the whole song. I remember we pulled up to a Circle K off of um, I-35 South Austin, and we were blasting and we were just thinking, dude, this is us. This is us. Imagine what else we can do if we start writing more, start layering more. It's just coming coming from people that never really sang, besides you know karaoke, backup vocalists. You know, just being more in the in the back background. It it, it really blew us away on how much further we were able to take it when we just applied it within our mind. Is the track listing placement going to be important for your album or EP releases when you get to that point? You know, we've we've talked about it, and I really don't think don't think so. We're just kind of releasing them just as we feel fit. Mm -hmm. I know we we do have plans to kind of just tie them all together. I know I've even mentioned to Brian, hey, what do you think of releasing a you know kind of like a deluxe version? You know, including some some uh, some acoustic songs on there at the very bottom of the album. 
a little, little treat for you guys or maybe a demo, you know, things, things of that nature. But no, most certainly. Yes, sir. It's it's we're just releasing as a as we feel. Speaking of that, we'll stay on track here with, you know, a current EP or, or, or uh, album down the road. Are we going to get that? Are we just going to get singles right now? Or what are you guys working on or even thought of possibly? No, for sure. We're going to make an album. That that okay. is something we, we we definitely see in the foreseeable future. We're just we're still pumping out the singles or well, I feel like we're pretty much done at this point. But okay. you got you guys will get them accordingly. But who knows? Maybe a month from now, me and Brian will get together. Hey, dude, let's start writing the album now. <laughs> Any songs standing out more to you right now that you guys have released? Is there any that I know these are your babies? I understand it completely. But are there any for you that's like, oh man, that that's that's my favorite one possible? Man, okay. To me, right now, to this day, it would it would mean uh never too late. Mm, okay. There's just a a strong message. And if 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 I can, can I take like the podium for one minute? Sure. Perfect. Okay. So never too late. Um many of you have heard it's a song about proving to yourself that it's pretty much never too late to change you know i was going through a very dark moment in my life i was i was using a lot of alcohol man it, it, it was really getting really bad so one day i woke up poured everything down the drain and since of september 7th of 2021 i have been been sober from alcohol so that that song was written around that time it just just really singing that chorus really resonating with how I was feeling is just, it, it really shows how far you can go. For somebody to take control of their life and be done with that, you proud of you, man. That's hard to do. Yeah, it was. It, it is. I see a lot of my friends and it's took, took a lot of my friends' life and some of my family members because of, you know, you and all that liver cancer, stuff like that from it. And it destroys your liver, but kidneys and everything. But for anybody to just put down anything that you're addicted to and you walk away god man it's so great it's, so it's, great. it's been tough but i'm uh, i have this app that's called i am sober and it tells you exactly how long how many calories how much money you've saved and every morning at eight o'clock when i wake up it reminds me hey start to pledge you tap on it and it gives you your message that you first wrote when you first started and it, it almost kind of brings me a, a, a tears to my eyes because i'm like wow this was past me you know yep Yep. So yeah, never too late stands out in the scene to me. What does each of you bring to this band that makes the chemistry just work? Dude, a ton of love and respect. Like that's first of all, we we respect each other so much, man. It's like a brotherhood out of I don't know the universe. They, the universe literally brought us together. Fate, uh, that guitar center, and then when me, Robbie, and Brian were all in the studio, man, we all just have such rare like unique elements robbie he's just so open-minded he has so many styles he brings them all together brian's such an amazing talented guitarist he can shred he can play just about anything and then i'm over here i don't really think of myself too high <laughs> but you know i you know i love to keep you know the vibes flowing i'm a very happy guy a very lovable guy but you know i excuse me i play with a lot of feel and you know they always tell me dude you can shred but i'm not as good mm -hmm. as brian but yeah, it's just when the three of us are together, man, it's just we're an unstoppable force. We're just bouncing back and forth. We've written songs in like two, three days, at just total 360 or 180 from what we first started with. It's just, it really proves to yourself, like, wow, you can really do anything. So I got to know, how's it been working with producer Robbie Joyner, man, for Fire for the Gods? I mean, how's it working with him? I mean, has he pushed you guys to your limits? Man, so much. Okay. First of all, Robbie, when you hear this, please, man, just want to know I love you and I can't wait to record with you again. <laughs> Secondly, um, just he, he he's just such a unique guy, man. Like he's the type of dude that you could just take comfort in. Like once you guys really get to know each other, he his studio becomes a safe space. You can do whatever you want, have a good time, you know, respectfully. And um, we just we we just love one another, man. That's the biggest thing. I hate to sound cliche, but it's really just love for one another. And with how how intelligent he is and how hard he pushes you, it really just has you going back for more. Like there was some vocal range ranges that I didn't think I was able to do. He just turns around, he's like, Hey, 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 come on. Keep pushing. <laughs> hey, come on, man. Give just just give me that note. <laughs> Like, I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. I don't know what to think. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm out of juice. He's like, no, you're not. 
<laughs> Drink some tea. So we're over here. Brian's running to the kitchen to make more uh, herbal tea for me. And I'm resting and take a big, you know, couple of gulps and whew, hammer it out. So now we're going to get to know Ruben. Okay. Besides from the band, we're just going to get to know Ruben here for a little bit. If you could write an album equivalent to your favorite band's album, which album would that be? And I know you probably have a ton, but there's got to be just one album. If you could write something like that, what would it be? Man. Okay. You said that. I thought of Events Sevenfold. I don't, I'm just going to go roll with it. Events <laughs> Sevenfold, uh, probably City of Evil. Okay. Okay. Such an amazing album, man. Just everything about that album from start to finish is beautiful. Now, Diamonds of the Rough is still good. But, ah, City of Evil, man. Hands down. <laughs> My final answer. If you could be a member in an iconic band and play one of their legendary shows, which band would it be and what show would it be possibly? Man. Or if you right? just had an opportunity to, or if you just had an opportunity to play with an iconic band, which one would it be? An opportunity to play with an iconic band. Gosh. Man, that's a that's a good. Honestly, right now I'm leaning towards. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Periphery recently, mm. so it would definitely be with Periphery man Misha. He's just an amazing guitar player. It's just his his leads are just very melodic. That's what I'm leaning towards now. More melodic tones, riffing. So I'm probably with him. All right, Ruben, how can folks stay in touch with Bridges of Blaze? Pick up this new single, Numb, and plus all these other singles that you guys have out right now. How can they do that, good sir? Well, if they go on over to our uh, link tree, which is on our Facebook, for, sh for sure, Facebook, uh, click on that little bad boy. It'll open up all of these lovely links, lovely portals to everything that you guys ever want to know about us. EPK, our website, we have merch available, we have YouTube links available. Whatever you guys need, whatever you guys want, go ahead and tap on one of those. You guys can even message us as well. We'll respond. Everybody stick around. We always got some great, great stuff coming up for you guys and gals out there. Please go out and check out our YouTube page and subscribe to Bods Mayhem Hour if you like what I'm doing. And please give us support. And also go out and check out Bridges of Blaze. I'm telling you, just give these guys a fair shot. They've got some good, good tunes out there. Uh, these singles that they've got out, uh, you'll, there's like five. Five, five, five singles from these guys. One will solely drag you into them. So give them a fair shot. So Ruben, thank you so much for being on the thank podcast. You. And I wish you guys nothing, nothing but the best of luck, my friend. Thank you, man. We hope to one day meet each other and share some lasagna. Yeah. Ah, yeah, lasagna. <laughs> Have a good night, man. Thank you so much. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.